Hi again, this is Michaela. In this module, we will continue our sensory training. We will be talking about individuals that fall into the category of low registration. Another word for someone in this category is a bystander, but throughout this module, we will be using the term a low registration individual. This is module four out of five, so we are just over halfway finished. We hope this has been helpful to understand some of the individuals here at CCW a little bit better. Before we jump into describing an individual with low registration, let's first talk about what a low behavioral response looks like in general. Remember that a high and low behavioral response are different. Anyone with a low behavioral response, such as an individual with low registration or someone with a sensory sensitivity, is going to look very different from a sensory seeker or a sensory avoider, which we covered in modules two and three. You may observe a seeker actively trying to find stimulation, while someone with low registration might be sitting at their table and not seeming to need anything. But when presented with extra stimulation, a low registration individual will demonstrate interest and enjoyment. Without high levels of input, these individuals aren't able to process the world around them and therefore have a tough time finding meaningful activities. However, with support, they can be introduced to activities that they discover as enjoyable and that fulfill their sensory needs. Since these individuals won't be displaying obvious behaviors that let you know what they like versus what they dislike, the first step is to help them discover their preferences. Or in other words, you need to test it out. You can do this by providing them with different types of sensory input within each of their senses and by paying attention to their reaction. This can feel like trial and error at times, but can help you better understand what they need. While you may not always get it right, that's okay. But as you get to know their sensory preferences better, it will help you better understand and care for them in the long run. So keep in mind, this typically isn't a one trial solution. Someone could simply be having a challenging day that causes a negative reaction to a specific sensory stimuli, but try to more focus on patterns in their reactions rather than just one of the events. So what does it look like to be an individual with low registration or be a bystander? These individuals have a high threshold for sensory stimulation and a low behavioral response to that stimulation. This means that the individual needs more sensory stimulation than average for the sensation to be recognized by their brain. But because they demonstrate a low behavioral response, they will not go out of their way to find additional stimulation to meet their sensory needs. Going back to the milk jug example in module one, these individuals are representative of the gallon jug, similar to the sensory seeking individuals but the difference is that these individuals won't seek out sensory stimulation on their own. Sometimes people may view individuals with low registration as lazy or less motivated when compared to others. This generalization is not correct. These individuals are not lazy or less motivated. Their threshold is simply not being met and they are not sure how to go about meeting it themselves. As we've said, low registration individuals often sit quietly instead of looking for different sources of stimulation. In the touch category, this may also look like the person is unaware of something on their skin like paint or food crumbs after they've had a snack. They might also present as having a high pain tolerance or may have bruises that they're unsure of where they came from. Finally, they might not respond to light touch. It's not that they're choosing to ignore it, but they might not actually feel this gentle touch since they need more stimulation than others to recognize it. Those who fall into the low registration category might need support and help to gain more touch input. Those who fall into the low registration quadrant for sound might become easily confused when someone is talking to them quickly or about something that they are unfamiliar with. Because of this, you may need to consider speaking clearly and loudly when in conversation. They might also not respond when their name is called, which isn't because they're ignoring you, they may simply just not be hearing you. This typically happens because they simply need louder volumes of noise and slower speech to hear you and understand what is being said. Now let's talk about vestibular and proprioception. These two senses work together to produce balanced and coordinated movements. 
When these individuals are not receiving enough vestibular and or proprioceptive input from their environment, they may present as being very clumsy. They tend to trip over or bump into things. They might feel unstable when walking upstairs, and they may require the use of a railing when using steps or walking on uneven surfaces. Please note, it is not that low registration individuals do not like the sensation of movement. They are simply not getting enough information from the world around them, so they have a difficult time understanding where their body is in space, which may make them seem clumsy. Those who fall into the visual low registration quadrant typically won't notice when people come in or out of the room, or they might have a hard time finding something in a busy environment. They might even walk right past something or someone that they are looking for, like a person in a crowded room or an art material in a messy drawer. This visual difficulty is not a specific sight problem, and it's not that they need glasses. It is that when looking at objects or environments with similar characteristics, there is not enough visual contrast for their brains to interpret the differences. This may make it hard for them to locate people or objects. Individuals who fall into the low registration quadrant for smell typically don't pick up on scents as easily as others do, if they even pick up on it at all. They also won't seek out smells, although when provided with certain candles, foods, or perfumes, they'll likely enjoy them. A quick disclaimer about taste, since smell and taste are so closely linked, a good way to tell someone's taste preferences is to observe what they bring for lunch every day. If someone is eating extremely spicy foods consistently, it may be because they genuinely need more flavor to taste something fully. This indicates a high threshold. But to figure out if they are a sensory seeker or a low registration individual, you would need to know if they are asking actively for these foods at home or if they are being offered to them passively by their guardian. Okay, so how can you help? In the category of touch, it's helpful to provide low registration individuals with education about hand washing when appropriate, since they often won't feel when something is stuck on their skin. For example, it may be good to remind them that it's okay to have dried paint on their arms or face when in the studio, but it is best to wash it off before you leave CCW for the day. In addition, these individuals might enjoy touching others throughout the day. They may need education from staff regarding appropriate touch during social interactions. On a different note, another part of this touch sensation includes being able to discriminate between hot and cold materials. Those that are considered low registration individuals for touch may have a difficult time indicating if something is too hot or too cold, and prolonged exposure to either of these extremes may result in an injury. As staff, it, it may be beneficial to check the temperature of foods before serving them to participants to make sure that they're not too hot. On the other end of the spectrum, if an individual is using something cold, such as an ice pack, it is important to limit their exposure to this cold, cutting it off at approximately 10 minutes. Now let's talk about the approach we suggested at the beginning of this module. Since low registration individuals do not express outward behaviors, it is best to offer them different sources of input and observe their reactions. This will show you patterns of behavior and hopefully reveal their preferences to you. Some ways to test it out in this category are to give artists an opportunity to work with materials and mediums that are more stimulating than others, such as wood, clay, different types of fabrics, paints, glitters, and more. These individuals may not seek out these materials themselves, but will demonstrate enjoyment when you, as the staff member, provide them with these materials. You can also provide different types of grips for their art materials to help supplement their touch sensation. These grips can be fashioned out of a rubber band, masking tape, or any other material in the studio you have that can be wrapped around either their paintbrush, their marker, or their pencil, or whatever other type of art utensil they're using at that time. Again, if the participant responds well, continue to offer these adapted materials. For individuals with low registration in sound, it is helpful to incorporate some of the following guidelines. These individuals have a more difficult time with taking in and processing sound stimulation, which can make conversations and learning harder. 
Some ways in which you can help are to make direct eye contact with them while speaking. This will help clue them in that you're speaking to them and that they should focus on what you're saying. It may also be helpful to be near the individual when you're speaking to them, speak louder and at a slower pace, and if necessary, use visuals to help them understand what you are speaking about. All of these methods will help the individual to hear and focus on what you're saying better. If you aren't quite sure if the individual is an individual with low sound registration, some things you can do to test this theory out are to provide increased opportunities for them to work in louder, more stimulating environments such as the music room or suggest that they listen to music through headphones while they work. Individuals who fall into the quadrant of low registration for vestibular and proprioception may benefit from education about the appropriate amount of force when thinking about interactions with others. Since they may require, since these individuals may require the feeling of more pressure than others, they might apply more pressure when giving hugs or handshakes. They may also benefit from receiving education about how to improve safety during activities that require increased balance. In addition, education on how to keep their workspace clean is also beneficial as the clutter may lead to falls. Ways to help reveal this person's vestibular or proprioceptive preferences are to try some of the following and observe their responses. You can encourage the use of colored pencils instead of markers. Colored pencils require more pressure to produce bright colors. Because of this, the person will receive more feedback about where their arm is in space while they are using the pencil. Markers, on the other hand, require minimal pressure and won't provide the same level of input. You can also try placing small bolts or weights at the end of the art utensil. This will, again, provide more pressure through the joints and increase proprioceptive feedback. Someone who demonstrates low registration in these areas may enjoy this feedback and want to continue using these modified art utensils. In addition, you can place an elastic resistance band around the bottom of the two front legs of their chair. As they kick their legs against the band, their proprioceptive threshold will be met, which will allow them to focus better on their work. Low registration individuals in the visual category may enjoy using colored glasses while they work. These are typically most stimulating when they are shades of pink, red, or orange, and these increase visual stimulation to a point where a low registration individual might be able to focus more on their work than on fulfilling their sensory needs. In addition, it is important to keep in mind to use larger fonts, bolding, underlining, highlighting, or bright colored texts when working with these individuals to increase visual contrast. Someone who falls into the low registration category for smell might need assistance identifying different art mediums that have fumes which can cause health risks, such as wood varnishes or screen printing inks. They may not notice the smell and independently limit their exposure, so you might need to help with this. In addition, keep in mind to be observant at all times of these individuals' reactions to different smells. Their response should let you know whether or not to continue encouraging them to have the experience or if they should be removed from the stimulation. Thank you for listening and learning about individuals with low registration in some of their sensory categories. In the next module, we will be talking about another low behavioral responsive individual described as sensory sensitive in one, few, or all of their sensations. Thanks again for listening.